This is a quick video on Biosphere. The intention of doing these videos is a quick chat that's visual and you can hear me talking through some of the questions. So it's essential that you go and read the notes um, in detail, write them out and practice them. Okay, after the video. Now, we're going to focus on a podzol today. When you think podzol, you need to think about a forest like this. The trees are evergreen, they don't lose their leaves con completely in winter. Okay, it's a, a coniferous tree or a fir tree. These tiny little uh, branches do fall, um, do let off these firs and they fall onto the soil. But it's not nearly as much as a brown earth where you have all the leaves falling off in winter. So, as you can see, you know, these kind of places, if you think about Loch Lomond or anywhere on these steep slopes, it's a temperate climate. It's quite warm in summer, but very cold in winter, and it rains most of the year. Podzol means under ash in Russian. It's, it creates this grey sublayer, and that's because all the minerals and stuff are actually leached out of the soil, so it resembles ash. So that's where it gets its name from. So we're thinking evergreen conifers, low temperatures, and we're thinking it like a cake because the layers of the soil are very much defined. The factors that we really focus on is the fact that leaves drop and it does create a hummus, but really what it is, is it's not as intense. We're thinking about an iron pan, that means because of the rainfall, you get a lot of leaching of water through the soil. That means it's a filtering through it's slowly working its way through the soil and as the water drips through, it's actually taking minerals with it. The other thing we think about is the, the roots. These, these kind of trees have shallower roots. They don't go as deep into the soil. And because of that, it can mean that the, the roots don't dig deep right through the horizons. And then there's less mixing because of that as well, as well as the fact that there isn't as many biota and earthworms and stuff like that. So you need to be able to draw this and write these exact things next to it. If you don't, the the SQA standard is that you would only get six out of eight maximum if you do not draw and annotate one of these profiles. So you can get six out of eight if you can just remember some of the key points, but if you want full marks, you need to draw this. So you need to practice this and get quick. They will give you marks for your annotation as well. So you don't, don't even necessarily need to write a full paragraph. You could just draw a really good horizon and make sure you annotate it properly to get eight out of eight. So as you can see here, what we have is, okay, the top of the soil on the ground. We can see some of the roots and this is the A horizon. Then we have this E horizon, that's to do with the nutrients that are in the soil. And then B and then C. So what we can see from the top, right, is that the we talk about the coniferous forest, the short, cool summers, precipitation, spring, snow melt means that there's more evaporation. I mean, what to do is stop and read through this and take your time um, in doing it. So stop the video, uh, draw it out and practice it. But what my intention is just now is just to make this quick. So I'm going to do a 10 key point list for you to think about on a podzo. We know what it looks like, we know some of the key factors, so it's the 10 things that I think you need to mention. Okay, some of these will obviously, I've said already, but certainly coniferous forest, right? Evergreen trees, you need to talk about that. The shallow roots, we need to mention the fact that the shallow roots mean that it's not as deep down, okay? And, and it just stays in that A horizon. Three, a thin black hummus layer, which is more or acidic, okay, because it doesn't decay quite as much as the, the hummus that you'll find on brown earth soil. Four, the darker staining in the A horizon um, from this hummus, because this hummus is so rich, it makes it a bit darker. It's like, remember, it's like material that's starting to decay hummus, right? So it's, it's decaying pines and furs from the tree. It's not like in the parks in Glasgow where it's this mushy mud that you see when the, the, the leaves start to decay. It's a, it's a much richer um, hummus. The ashy grey lower air of the horizon due to the leaching. You need to mention that because it's very crucial. Well-defined horizons. That's why I say this is often like a cake. OK, 
okay, it looks like a cake. It's all very distinct, right? If you imagine how it looks. It's like a, okay, then you've got the jam or whatever, then another sponge, and then you've got your biscuit base, even like a cheesecake. Okay, the cheesecake biscuit base is what I've said at number 10, which is the uh, the weathered rock or glacial material in the sea horizon. Um, there's no mixing as there's fewer biota. It's really important to say that because that's why you have these defined horizons. There's no earthworms um, crawling through the soil to sort of uh, break it up. There's an iron pan that develops in the upper B horizon. This is basically is because any nutrients which are sitting here uh, and then leaching through, you get this build up here. So these start to, these little dots, these little nutrients start to build up and then they, they stop here. That causes water logging. And with water logging, it creates this reddish brown horizon in B. Okay? So that's why we've spoke about that bit there. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Um C, I've already said this is a weathered glacial material. So take a quick look at these ten. Um try and remember them. You could even come up with a, a sort of acronym on how to work out uh, what they all are. You know, I don't know. Even if you're taking one or two words from each of the ten and then making that an, another list and then trying to rhyme them off is a way of, of remembering it. Okay, the other thing, if, if you know these ten points, it'll help you draw this as well as opposed to just writing it out constantly. Okay, hopefully that makes sense for you. Um, any questions, feel free to, to drop me an email. All right, thank you.